Good morning and welcome to day one of our 14 days through the book of Genesis series. And I'm really excited that you're joining me on this journey. And I hope that you'll keep up with the readings. Uh, I've specifically compared to the one we've just finished, which was 21 days through the New Testament. And that was like an hour to an hour and a half reading a day for some of the, the sections. This is going to be much shorter. So today's reading, Genesis 1 to 3, took me 11 minutes, and it'll be about that each day as well. So please keep up with the readings, and then please do put your comments in below the video as well each day. Um, and then I want to ask you, if you could, two things. Could you please like the videos? That just helps get them out on Facebook and on YouTube. And then also, if you could share them to your pages on your social media. So that way we can get more and more people joining us on this little journey together. So today we read Genesis chapter 1 to 3. And the verse that stood out for me today was Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. Let me read that to you. This is after Adam and Eve have eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which they were told not to. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and eat from the tree of life and live forever in this state of sinfulness, he thrust him out of the garden. The man has become like one of us to know good and evil. There is, um, there was a naivety, one might say, an innocence in naivety to Adam and Eve. They had that as a God-given gift when they were created. And which, when lost, brought darkness and pain and defilement to them. In Romans chapter 16, uh, verse 19, Paul says this to the Romans. I want you to be wise in what is good and, in sim and simple concerning evil. I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. You know, our acquaintance with the whole concept of evil... And our feeling the temptation of evil and a curiosity to look into evil and to know more about evil. We are naturally curious now about evil. And that curiosity and that temptation towards it puts us in a continual battle to retain innocence in the eyes of God. Um, Lot's wife. That's my phone. Lot's wife could not help herself looking back after she had been rescued. She gets rescued from the city of Sodom. And yet having been told don't look back. She looks back and she died a memorable death. Because of her curiosity. That she couldn't help herself looking. And you know that one last look. That one last curious look to see what was happening to the wicked city. Was her demise. And I was surprised. Um looking back a couple of years now, how many women, seemingly decent women at our children's school, for example, some of them claiming to be Christians, were reading that book, Fifty Shades of Grey. Why? Because everyone was talking about it. It was like the rage. It was so popular. And many of them picked it up out of curiosity. Curiosity. And oh, how many cats were killed by that curiosity. Understand that evil is now very much a part of your life. And you, like the rest of us, are susceptible to its temptations. So don't give in to your curiosities. But instead, as Paul wrote to uh, the Philippians, and in fact, I'm going to read this verse to you. And this will be my final charge and encouragement to you. This is uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. This is now God's advice to the human race and even to Christians who, man, we are now acquainted with evil and we are susceptible to its temptations and we are curious to look into it. Don't look into it. Stay innocent regarding it. This is how Paul says it to the Philippians. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. 
If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And the God of peace will be with you. I'll see you tomorrow.